Good evening followers and welcome to this special edition. They're all special of course, but this is number five in the series of uh, repeat renditions that I've been running recently. So uh, hello to everyone watching and of course hello to the bride and groom themselves, to Rachel and Andrew. Rachel and Andrew, thank you so much for allowing me to read out your ceremony uh, again to you. And I know that you've been canvassing and sharing and liking the posts that I've been doing over the last 24 hours uh, around the family and friends, of course the wedding party, which I'll name in a second. And, uh, you know, really thanks so much. And don't forget to take a selfie uh, of me uh, on the screen with you. Sadly, you can't be here t tonight, of course, but at least we are here virtually. Um, can I start off by saying a massive thank you as, as well to Media Images. Media Images were the, uh, the clip that you've seen at the start of the show. And of course, you might have guessed it, it's a really famous track. It was the aisle song that Rachel and her mum Debbie had walked down the aisle to. And uh, it was Highland Cathedral, played by our bagpiper on the day. So a really special thanks for Media Images. And for the rest of this edition of Repeat Renditions, you'll see that I've got a slideshow playing in the background of every single picture that was taken by the absolutely fantastic Wayne White Photography. Wayne, you're an absolute star for putting this together for us tonight. And that's just going to play on a loop, uh, and I hope you can see the pictures in the background. I've been posting a few of them today, of course, and not least... An absolute cracker, you might have seen it, of um, Rachel and Andrew's son, Jack, where he was holding the, the rings during the warming of the rings ceremony. I can also say a really special uh, shout out to the bride herself, Rachel. Rachel, um, your mum, uh, uh, Deborah, got in touch with me, actually. Uh, and this is from her, and it's from Andrew, and it's from Jack, and it's from all your closest family and friends. There's a lot of uh, heroes in, uh, in this current um, a pandemic that we're going through and a lot of them of course are in the NHS or on the front line but they want to recognise you Rachel has been a, a, a key worker hero as well uh, Rachel works on videos in the Millennium Hotel in George Square in Glasgow uh, and she's been still going to work tirelessly while um, hubby Andrew and Jack have been at home of course uh, and uh, Rachel has been playing a real key role in the lockdown process I guess because the, um, the, the NHS staff have been staying in the hotel. So please, everyone, could you please give Rachel a wee like, a wee uh, comment there, as well as everyone, of course. But Rachel, thank you so much. And that's a big uh, shout out from your family, your close family for you. So I hope you enjoy that shout out, Rachel. Let me tell you a little bit more how they ended up picking me as their celebrant. Uh, we met, their wedding last year was at the Croon in Loch Lomond. And it was on the 16th of August 2019, so not too far ago, uh, long ago, so not even your first anniversary yet, guys, but uh, I hope you enjoy this rendition tonight. Uh, and we met actually only probably six or seven months before uh, at the uh, SEC wedding show. And I think it's fair to say we clicked instantly. They probably were going at such a fast pace that day, they almost walked past the fuse ceremony stand. But I managed to stop, have a chat with them, and really, within like that... 10 minutes they were booking me and they did do as soon as they went home so a uh, thanks again guys for um for doing that and it was it's been great to get to know your course along the way and then to deliver your ceremony last year was just fantastic and of course we get a second shot of it uh, tonight um uh, i want to talk to you through the wedding party uh, i think there's lots of comments recently about the really interested how the size and relationships people have to each other uh, in the wedding party. So let me talk you through. Um, we, we obviously have the groom, Andrew, and uh, the bride, Rachel. Um, we have uh, Debbie, uh, Rachel's mum, who had the fantastic honour of giving her away. We had best man, Stevie, who is best friend to Andrew. And I've got to say, Stevie, if you're watching tonight, and Andrew, you remember this. I can remember Stevie being actually more nervous than Andrew was on the day. Um, uh, we had maid of honour, Julie, who's Andrew's sister. We had bridesmaid Georgina, who's Rachel's sister, and flower girls Katie, uh, who's Andrew's niece, who's six years old, uh, and of course, probably the one that stole many hearts on the day was our bride and groom's son, uh, wee Jack, two and a half, probably turned three, I guess, by now, of course. Uh, he was our little page boy on the day. 
Uh, and we had groomsmen, we had another Andrew, who was uh, Andrew's brother-in-law. We had Jamie, who was Andrew's friend. And we had uh, another Jamie. So two Andrews and two Jamies. You can imagine why I was feeling like reading out all these names on the day. Not to get them, uh, uh, to get them 100% right, of course. Uh, and Jamie is eight and he's Andrew's nephew also. And a special mention, of course, to Andrew's parents, Geraldine and David. And listen, thank you all to the wedding party who made me feel so warm and welcomed on the day. Now, I don't know if any of you have been at the Croon. Uh, it's in Loch Lomond. Um, it's not far from kind of Duck Bay Marina, Cameron House Hotel, that sort of area of the, the shore. It's absolutely stunning. I was driving down. The wedding was to be an outdoor wedding. It was August. It's Scotland, of course, and uh, the heavens were kind of had opened. And we thought we might get outside, but the... Um, the ceremony ended up being inside the venue, which was equally as fantastic and memorable, of course. But I tell you what, the guys got some fantastic pictures outside of the, the kind of venue area. And you can see there's the wedding party just in the background. The lock, body banks of Loch Lomond in the background, of course. And uh, you'll see pictures on my Facebook. Uh, have a look at that uh, and look at them behind me to town. But without further ado... Um, let me start by doing a little bit of something different. I want to read out to you, uh, of course, their story and their four reasons, but I also want to read out to you the warming of the rings gesture. So, warming of the rings, I said earlier, the, the fantastic picture of a little Jack holding the rings. Now, this is a great gesture. I'm going to read it as it is until you can get a feel of how this works at a ceremony. Now, as you would expect, today's best man, Stevie, has been looking after Rachel and Andrew's wedding rings. Later in the ceremony, Rachel and Andrew will exchange those rings as a symbol of their love for one another. These rings also will be a visible sign of their lifelong commitment to each other. As we continue with the ceremony, Andrew and Rachel would like to invite all of you, their family and friends, to take part in a warming of their wedding rings gesture. They ask that each of you hold them for a moment Warm them with your love and make a silent wish for our happy couple and their future together before passing them to the person next to you. The rings will then make their way back and forth across each aisle, crossing the other side, where they'll eventually make their way back down to Stevie, our best man. Stevie, would you start by passing the rings to Rachel's mum, Debbie, at the start, thank you. Now, whilst the rings are passing around the, uh, all the wedding party, I'd like to share with you Andrew and Rachel's story. Now, the story officially began many, many years ago. In fact, they don't even remember meeting and have no recollection of the event. Let me explain. The story goes that whilst our happy couple were a mere two or three years old, they met at playgroup. So although not confirmed, Rachel and Andrew may have even shared their first peck on the cheek whilst playing at shops or doctors or nurses. I think I'll leave the rest of that to your imaginations. It was to be 18 years before they were to rekindle their friendship. That was started almost amongst the Lego, the jigsaws and the nursery books. They were both attending Andrew's cousin's 21st birthday party. Andrew's mum introduced Rachel to Andrew and asked if he remembered her. Andrew, whilst wearing a black Nike baseball cap and drinking from a can of venom, answered, No, and walked away. Not the best behaviour, Andrew, from your future to your future bride. Rachel and Andrew's families were sitting at the same table during the party and David noticed that every time Andrew spoke, Rachel was looking at him. David told Andrew this and every time it happened, he would kick Andrew under the table. Suffice to say that Andrew's leg was pretty well bruised by the end of that night, about the amount of times that Rachel had given him the eye. To get things started, Rachel then approached Andrew at the bar, took his beloved can of venom off him 
and took a swig. A modern day chat up line, if you will. They then chatted away the rest of the night, and from the next day on, the text messages between them were being exchanged in quick succession, leading to a proper first date being arranged. A cheeky wee Nando's, mini golf, and Spider Man 2 at the cinema was to be the activities for their first date. Andrew was hoping that his £100 investment would at least get him a second date. <coughs> it did, and their second date was a day out to Edinburgh Zoo, whilst Rachel was suffering from some severe sunburn that she got whilst attending the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony in Glasgow the day before. She was a little delicate, to say the least. Again, another hundred pounds later, Andrew was perhaps dreaming of more than that peck on the cheek he got back in those carefree playgroup days. Many dates later, it was to be official, on the 3rd of October 2014, that they were boyfriend and girlfriend. In other words, it was Facebook official. Status has changed, there was no going back. <coughs> the relationship grew from strength to strength, and over the years as a couple, there have been lots of trips away together to places like Amsterdam, London, Cyprus, and Tenerife. Their first holiday in 2015 to Tenerife, though, was pretty memorable. When they were out one evening, Andrew was introduced to a very strong cocktail called a Fat Pig. He was immediately hooked on this new drink. Andrew became rather worse for wear quickly, which resulted in Rachel practically carrying him home to the hotel. Despite Andrew's promises of being sick in the carefully and lovingly placed bucket, he missed the target completely. Much to Rachel's annoyance, of course. 2016 was a pretty special year too, as they found out that Jack was on the way. A little surprised at first, but a happy surprise, of course. Telling their parents that a wee bundle of joy was on the way was a little daunting. But when they broke the news to Derry, Geraldine and David, there were tears flowing everywhere, mostly from Andrew's dad, David. He's a big softy, really. So on the 30th of January 2017, Jack David Getty came into their lives at 5.44pm, weighing a healthy £7.11. From the minute Jack arrived, they had to think about every single thing and plan every single day. But that's parenting for you. Jack has brought them closer together and made them even stronger as a couple. And now as a family, of course. Today is almost, sorry, today is also an important step in bringing them closer under one surname, which is so important to Rachel. And she doesn't even mind investing £85 in a shiny new replacement passport. Andrew had been thinking about his proposal plans to Rachel and wanted to do the honourable thing of asking permission from her mum, Debbie. Trying to coordinate some time to speak to each other did become a little difficult. In the end, Andrew grabbed a moment when they were both free and had a video call with Debbie. And thankfully, she agreed to Andrew's plan of asking her daughter to marry him. Next on the list was to buy the perfect ring. So off to the jewellers he went and took his sister Julie along for an expert female eye viewpoint. Andrew spotted the most perfect of rings. That would suit Rachel. The only trouble was that Julie fancied the ring also and even tried to put him off buying it with a view of maybe getting it for herself. Julie, really? It was to be around two months later before Andrew's proposal plans took place. And thankfully, Debbie managed to keep it a secret and allowed Andrew to have his moment. 
Rachel and Andrew have always enjoyed a trip at Christmas to the festive markets in Edinburgh. So Andrew saw this as the perfect opportunity and backdrop to a romantic winter proposal. Rachel booked the stunning Apex Hotel and had upgraded them to a swanky rooftop suite. They were due to go out for dinner, so got ready and headed to the hotel bar for a few drinks before heading out. They arranged a taxi with reception and they said it was going to be half an hour. But the taxi arrived almost straight away. So they ordered another drink whilst they were waiting. Andrew then faked that he had left his phone in the room and headed back up there. He was gone for quite a while and ended up Rachel calling him. The next thing, the second taxi turned up and they had to turn that away also. When Andrew rang back Rachel and said that she needed to go up the stairs quickly, Rachel headed back upstairs and eventually turned open the door and was greeted by rose petals on the floor and candles lit everywhere, which led to Andrew on one knee ready to ask his special question. Andrew even caught the moment on camera and when they watched it back, the time in between Rachel being asked and answering seemed like an absolute age. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, the answer was yes, which led us all here today. Rachel and Andrew truly see today as the start of their ever, ever after together, alongside their son Jack, under the one name of Getty. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together virtually tonight for the happy couple, Rachel and Andrew. Thank you so much for all the comments, guys. They're, they're flowing in there. Keep commenting, saying things there. Uh, Deborah, I, I can't see the pictures in the background. I uh, hope you can. They'll stand a little bit off the side there so you can see them. If you liked their story, guys, put a little like in there. Rachel and Andrew, what was it like hearing that second time around? Did it remind you of anything? Did you have forgot some of that story? Can you, oh, Rachel's giving us a woohoo. Thank you. Thanks, Julie, as well. Lots of love hearts and thumbs up from Julie. Uh, he, uh, and even though Julie tried to steal the ring, of course, remember from the story, that was very naughty, Julie, but at least Andrew kept it for his, his beautiful bride in the end. Let me now uh, read out the uh, four reasons, guys. So, first of all, uh, Andrew's four reasons why he loves Rachel. Reason number one. I love how much of an amazing mother she is to her son, Jack and how much of a family person she is. I love how much she makes me laugh with her sarcastic banter. And reason number three, I love how adventurous she always is and always wants to go on family holidays away together. But the one thing that annoys me is that no matter how many times we have argued with each other, she always makes me laugh afterwards when I'm trying to be serious with her. Well, I hope that one's actually still continuing, Andrew, and still making you uh, mad. Maybe you could tell us with a little comment there, or Rachel, if you're logged in, tell us what Andrew's saying about that. Uh, because I think that's a good thing. If you're having a, a bit of a tiff, then have a laugh about it after. I think that's a good thing to do. And on to Rachel's four reasons why he, uh, she loves Andrew. So reason number one. I love how he loves me for who I am and always believes in me. Reason number two. I love you because you're such an amazing dad to Jack and teach him things that I'm rubbish at. And reason number three. I love that you're just my best friend and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. But, and there's always a but, and some of the guys might recognise this one. He always leaves his clothes lying in the bathroom after a shower. And when I tell him to pick them up, he never does. And always says, I'll get it in a minute. Which, of course, never, ever happens. Does anybody recognise that? I'm sure you do. Part of the ceremony also, just to finish off, guys, was a traditional Scottish hand fasting. 
where uh, to represent Andrew, uh, we use the Grampian family tartan. And to represent Rachel, we use the Boyd family tartan. So they both tied the knot using those two tartans. It was a beautiful part of the ceremony. And again, some pictures, you might have seen them in the background, or I'll post a few more on my Facebook page also. So, that about wraps things up for repeat renditions number five. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed that one. It's, it, I hope you agree it's a truly beautiful story. Um, right from playgroup days to their adult life and now with the, their beautiful addition in their son, uh, Jack. Now, I mentioned earlier that they both had their wedding aisle song, which was the stunning uh, Highland Cathedral. And to play us out tonight, I'm going to let you hear a little bit of their uh, first dance song. Uh, whilst I just, I'll move the camera a little bit closer to those pictures. Um, and uh, it's Michael Bubbly and everything. Guys, thanks so much for watching tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Watch out for the post and next time uh, we have a repeat rendition, which will be next week at some point. Thank you so much. Leave some more likes and comments down the bottom there. We'll see you later. Thank you.